it's just a choice. It's a choice you have. It's a choice you have today that you're going to worship the Lord and you're going to allow Him to do what He wants to do. Or it's your choice that you're not. It's just simple as that. It's a simple choice this morning. If you can just press in just a little bit past your cowardice, past the feebleness, past whatever is going on in your life, just press just a little bit more. It takes just a little bit of pressing because he wants to do something today. Don't you feel that? Don't you feel him in the atmosphere? Come on, why don't you just feel for it? Why don't you just raise your hands this morning and feel for it? Oh, it's just, it's personal. It's personal today. It's between you and him. Why don't you reach for him and say, Lord, I need you. I want you here, Lord. Don't pass me by this morning. There's things in my life that I need you to straighten out. I need your guidance on things. Don't pass me by this morning, Lord. Here I am, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just give him another hand of praise. I was trying to think of a song, but it left me. I was trying to get Allie to help me think of it, but she couldn't think of it either. But I praise the Lord. Because he is so good. He's so good. God is so good to us. And he just blesses us abundantly, and we don't even realize it sometimes. And the things that we go through and the, the things that we come into in our lives and he helps us out of it and we don't even realize it and we don't yeah. even thank him for it. Just the day-to-day -day activities. Somebody gets mad at you and you want to get mad back at him but something in you just won't let you. Why don't you just say thank you, Jesus, for not, for not allowing me to do what I wanted to do. But to pursue your heart to pursue you and to be who you want me to be. Come on. Still trying to allow the Lord to let me remember the song. Yes, God. I guess it's. I don't guess that I need to sing it today, but we'll sing one more song as we prepare for the word. Just reach out and touch the Lord.
him today. Yes. 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 Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. I appreciate him, don't you? Amen. Yes, Lord. I was sitting there thinking. I was thinking about how folks are. They, they travel down to the ball games. And... And you sit there, somebody be hitching, say, get up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get behind them. Come on. Come on. Get up. And them knows that people can do more when you get behind them. Yes, sir. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. You what? You come here to praise the Lord, didn't you? Yeah. I said, we come here to praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him a big praise. Yeah. So I ain't lived my new sin. I wouldn't let my new savior in. Then Jesus came like a traitor in the night. Praise I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in night. Now I'm so happy, sorrow to die, praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander the train, straight as a king, narrow out the way. Now I have prayed it, hold that for the right, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night, now I'm so happy, sorrow to time, praise the Lord, I saw the light. You saw that light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in night. And I am so happy. Tomorrow is time. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Just like a blind man wandering along, worrying tears I paint for my own. And like a blind man, I give back the time. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in light.
Every 
Spirit of Antichrist is moving in in every direction, even in the churches. And I was, the minister called me this morning while I was preparing to come to church, and they were just tore up and said, What 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 am I going to do? I said, I'll tell you what the Lord told me to do after I talked to a while and she expressed her feelings. And I guess the feelings of a lot of folks. And I said, the Lord, I was disgusted. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? He said, just keep preaching the word. Amen. He said, the word will prevail. Amen. Keep preaching the word. The word will prevail. The true word. The true word of God, I promise you, it won't let you down. I'm not saying it'll take the fight away from you, but I'm telling you the true word of God will prevail. God's word, there's no power that's ordained can stand up to the word of God. Hallelujah. When God anoints his word, there's no demon, there's no devil, there's no antichrist spirit that can stand against the word of God. Praise God. In their times and times of, of many situations, God's word has always stood up. I thought about the time that the, that the, that was eating ass's head and devil's dung. And the word of the Lord came to the prophet and there was all but the gates locked and he stood up and said tomorrow this time. <laughs> I know God can change the situation in 24 hours in one hour. 24 hours he changed that whole situation. I know it looks rough, but heaven knows in 24 hours, God could change this whole situation in America. He's that kind of God. But what moves God is when people pray, when people gather up and they're concerned about things. You know, we have to be concerned about things. We just can't sit and I know you got a lot of preachers just saying God's going to do it anyhow. I don't preach it like that. On, I man. preach it as my people, Amen. which are called by my name. Yes, See, there's something we got to do. Yes, sir. There's something we got to prepare our hearts. Amen. Now God could come in and move and draw in a new crowd, but where would it leave us? Come on, man. You have to prepare for rain. See, a farmer has to prepare for rain. He can't just sit around, sit on a porch. While the grass takes over his crop, it may be dry as a powder house, but he has to get out there and do what he has to do. Sometimes you gotta fuck water. Sometimes if you want your garden and your grass to survive, you gotta water it yourself. Sometimes you gotta go look for water. You gotta go search for a stream. You gotta get somewhere and pray and say, Lord, lead me to the stream. Lead me to the rock. Let me drink from that rock. He won't lead you. You know what the children of Israel take 40 years in the wilderness. 
and they never dug a well, and they never planted a garden, but they ate. They survived. They drank. He gave water from the rock. He gave a manna from above. Even though in all of us it wasn't things wasn't pleasing. But they stayed 40 years. The Bible said the feet didn't swell and the clothes didn't wax old. They kept the same suit of clothes for 40 years. God can do it. God can keep your house from rotting and out of money. Come on. Come on. God can keep the term outside of Come on, praise God. Now man's plan, you know, we're we're living in a church age that's that fell all the way to the plans of man. What about the plans of God? What about where God said, if you'll keep my statutes, walk in my commandments, I'll make you the head, not the tail. I'll make you above only. You will live and not bow. God's word will stand right now in this evil hour. The word of God will prevail. And it's going to prevail for somebody. They get this rain coming. God still got rain in the clouds. No matter how dry it is, how dust it is, there's some rain waiting in clouds, waiting on us to call on it. He said, Call upon me. And I'll answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. And God's got, got things Woo. up his sleeve that we ain't even heard of yet. Amen. But blow our minds. Right. Hallelujah. He's got miracles. He's got wonders. He's got signs. He can step out and do. Praise God. Get to rock this generation and turn it upside down. Yeah. Oh, Hallelujah. He's not a dead God, folks. Used to sing that old song, God's not dead, he's still alive. Take somebody by the hand and tell them, God is not dead, he's still alive. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We can't add death to death, we gotta add life to life. We gotta praise God when we don't feel like it. We gotta bring God when we don't see nothing. And after Elijah, after Elijah had stood up against, he called for a drought because Jezebel, Ahab had went out and married Jezebel, brought her into Israel, and she brought her temples. He built her temples. And it wasn't long before all of Israel was Turning the bell. And God told Elijah, said, Go tell Ahab. Thus said the Lord. Hey, it won't rain, nor do. Come on. Until I say so. Yeah. I want you to know God still got something up his sleeve. He knows how to get a hold of the government. He knows how to get the attention of the government. Yeah. Well, he's doing it. You know, there's judgment with mercy, and there's judgment without mercy. That's right. That's true. And look, that them folks in Hawaii over there is getting judgment without mercy. That whole island's burning down. Sure is. There's miles and miles of nothing but crust. Burned over. And you know what? The, the, the winds were so fierce that God made that fire burn where fire wouldn't normally burn. It was running folks into the ocean. Running for their lives. God's got a way of getting folks. I guarantee you he's got their attention over you. They're showing on the news there's a church right in the middle of it. Didn't get touched.
There's a church right in the middle of it getting it to them. Didn't get touched. Jesus. The fire leaked over it, went around it. But you know God's trying to talk to folks. Yes, he hey, look here, it's me. Yes. I can I can burn y'all down and leave my house here. Yes. I can burn y'all's house up. I can leave my house. Come on. I can show you what I can do. I'm going to take my house out and leave your house. But he's trying to talk to us. He's trying to talk to this generation. He's trying to wake us up. He's trying to get us to see I can still be touched. Things is falling through. But you can't sit there and watch it fall through. You know what they did? They gathered them when the trouble came. They gathered into the house of the Lord and began to pray. They gathered and started crying to the Lord. But you know the devil gets people's minds so occupied in life. And it takes every day and all your time to keep up with life. What about eternal life? Amen. What about when you die? You ain't going to take none of this stuff with you. All the things that we, 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 we let God go to hell when you die. If you die before sundown, you ain't going to take a pair of shoes with you. You ain't going to take a copper cent with you. All your bank account will still be left for somebody else to spend it. And I promise you, there'll be somebody after you before you cold. If you got anything. If you ain't got nothing, they still want what you got. A little prod of land. A little broke down car won't even run. A cow has got holes in it. Whole families fall out over stuff like that. Never speak again. It's the spirit of greed. But God's trying to get our attention yes, is. in this generation. California ain't had a, a storm in 80 years. The one's going on shore. Should be sometime if it ain't done went on there. They said it's going to be catastrophic. It ain't that strong, but it's been so dry. Yeah. Ain't had no rain in so long. Flooding all the way up in Las Vegas. 80 years old. They said 80, then they said never, really, never. California never had a storm like this. In history, God is trying to get people's attention. See, California is a leader of perverseness. California is the leading state to lead out the spirit of the Antichrist. They try everything that's wrong first, and they try to spread it across the nation. Yeah, come on. But the Lord been telling us he's going to he's going to visit those vacation places. Well, they call that place in Hawaii the paradise of the earth. But God's burning up the paradise of the earth, and He ain't going to be through the shores of California. And they're making their storms out there. There's three or four, or five of them out there making up now. And God done told me He's going to visit Mobile for not letting us have a tent lot. He's going to visit New Orleans. You know, last time he gave New Orleans judgment with mercy. But he told me this time, New Orleans, New Orleans is going to get judgment without mercy. Because the first thing they did, they opened up their witch houses and their bar rooms. And they shook their fists at God and said, New Orleans is back. See, that's what New Orleans is about. It's a place of witchcraft and a place of drinking and a place of partying. People go to these places to sin. They go to these places to party. Not to serve God. They go to sin. And God's going to judge. He's going to visit these sin holes. God is going to destroy these places that sold themselves to work wickedness. You watch. It's going to be one after the other. It's going to be one after the other. But you know what the Bible said? God knows how to deliver the righteous. Through it all. 
if we'll stay on our knees, God will deliver you. Through it all, if we'll keep our children on their knees and teach them the word of God and sow the word of God in their hearts and keep them away from all this stuff. Come on! Tell it! Teach them about Jesus. I was watching a preacher. He was telling about this Barbie doll. You know, you, you go back and study the history. Barbie was a prostitute. That's where it began. And on this Barbie movie, he was showing when it first comes on, they're beating the brains out of babies. They're crushing them and beating their brains out. Teaching them to kill babies. We're in a generation. See, the devil's sly. He'll work. Yes, sir. You heard of Ishtar in the Bible. That's where it came from. Ishtar. And there was another, I forget her name, but the pattern Barbie after. But it's the soul. And what she's teaching us in this movie is to teach that women can do without men. That's perversion. That's pushing, pulling the children into this perversion stuff. We have to pray and be wise and for God to open my eyes and to see. We have to wake up, folks. We can know this for sure. If the world is going after something, you better run. You better inspect it. You better go to the root. If the world is, is on fire after something, you better not jump up because your children want it. You better go somewhere and pray and study and see what this thing is. You can be putting a spirit in your home. Why are you leaving your children through these things? The devil works like this. Know this. The Bible said it like this. That anything that's highly esteemed Hear this. Anything that's highly esteemed among men, he said it's abomination to God. See, we're living in an age now that the church don't, don't read scriptures like this. They don't want scriptures like this that will separate them. But he said, come out of her, my people. Come out of her. Come out of her. I'm out of her. See, this old whole church, this old backslid church, ain't got no eyes to see. They can't see nothing. And they don't want to hear nothing. Eyes there calling dumb dogs. Came by. We got a bunch of dumb dogs in the pulpit across America today. I said a bunch of dumb dogs. They ain't got no bark. They ain't got no backbone. To save your children. I'm trying to save you and your children. I'm trying to pull you out. I'm trying to give you something that you can fight with. Go ahead, go ahead. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what he told me. I told that preacher this morning. I said, the Lord told me, just preach the word. He said, the word will prevail. She said, that's my answer. That's my answer. Two words. I've got my answer. I'll see you later. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep preaching the word. See, preachers get discouraged, and you can get discouraged. But the Lord said, keep preaching. Keep opening that book. Hallelujah. You might struggle. You might fight powers. But I want you to know there's a power from on high that can come down on you. That anointing of the Holy Ghost that will show back the powers, that will show back the darkness, that will give you liberty. And the word of God will have free course in the midst of a battle. Hallelujah. And you say amen. Amen. But these movies, see, they slipping in on people. This old 
one they had was witchcraft. What was it? It was a. Uh, forget the name. Huh? No, that other thing. Frozen. But anyhow. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. Witchcraft. Man, we have to teach our children. He said, teach your children. There's one God. Yes. Yes. Teach your children. Yes. To serve you. Yes. There's God's many out here in the world. Come on. And we're in a time that the church is turning to the gods of the world. Yes. And they're blind. The Bible said he's his prophets are blind. His ministers are blind. He told them, said, come. Y'all come on in. Come on in the vow. Said, his prophets can't see. That's right. Come on in and destroy. That's what's going on, see. The men in the pulpits ain't got no backbone and no anointing. Come on. That's right. And it takes the anointing to open your eyes. Dead letter, deadness, coldness, running through, getting out quick as you can and getting on down the road because you don't want to fight. It's a fight. Paul said, fight the good fight. Oh, there's a fight and there's a good fight. But the good fight is a fight of faith. The good fight is when you stand up. The good fight is when you go. The good fight is when you live right according to God's word. See, we're coming to a time that think there's a divide going on. You got a lot of folks going the other way. You got a lot of folks selling out to the world that you would have thought never would have. Never would have. But they're selling out. They're selling out. They're letting go. Little by little. Places they used to wouldn't go. Things they used to wouldn't do. Clothes they used to wouldn't wear. Songs they used to wouldn't listen to. Music they used to wouldn't listen to. When the first got saved. But now they're going back to worldly music. Because that's what the church worlds are doing. They're going to the worldly places. The worldly concerts. Everything the world's doing. When John said, love not the world. Love not the world, neither the things in it. Man, you better follow. He said, you left. I'll tell you what's happened. He said, I've got somewhat against you. You've left your first love. When you first got saved, you didn't want nothing to do with the world. You didn't want nothing to do with music. That was wrong. You didn't want nothing to do with worldliness. You were so happy you were saved. You had joy without the world. You had peace that you never had before. And you weren't just about to give up that peace and that joy for everything. That the world off. But we're in a time now. People's letting go. Turn the loose. And the preachers love them. They're not bad folks. They just fall down. Let them fall down. Amen. That's right. Come on now. But you know what he said in the Bible? I could say that too. But I ain't. I ain't going to confess I'm fall down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I said, I'm not going to confess I'm fought down. He said, Paul said, after you've done all you can do to stand, stand. After you've done stood, if you don't feel like you can stand no more, get up if you got to prop yourself up. If you got to pull yourself up by something on the wall. 
Listen, I'm not going to give down. I'm not going to take down. If I have to pull myself up, I'm getting back up. Hallelujah. And before you know it, God will give you strength. God will strengthen you. God will give you the Holy Ghost strength. You'll be able to go on. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Don't throw the towel in. Amen. I like that old fighter. He was in the rain. It looked like he was getting beat to death. Well, he was getting beat to death. Getting whooped. And his man was there in the corner. So let me throw this out here. You're going to keep God in her Don't you throw no towel here on me. I still got a shot left. I still got a shot left. I still got something left. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on my time. I'm waiting on my time. I'm waiting on my lift. I'm waiting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you go with God, God will give you a shot between the devil's eyes. God will give you something to put that devil out. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That old fighter Thank you, Jesus. is getting beat. He's laying in there. All the hunts of manners through that tile. And it was going to hell. That old fighter grabbed that towel before it hit the floor, threw it back in. So don't you throw no towel. I ain't no quitter. I still got some fight in me. It may not look like I've got no fight left. Hallelujah, but I still got some fight. I still got some punch. I still got something in me telling me to go ahead. Why don't somebody praise him? Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Lord. Little father. Come on. Lay me now. Still getting beat. Glory. Thank you, Lord. But you let that young father hunt yourself down. In his hand. Come on. In the draw. He said, This is what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting. I knew I was tough enough to take the licks. I may not could spar with you lick to lick and toe to toe. But I was tough enough to take the licks. I was tough enough to get up and go back and pray when I didn't feel like it. I was tough enough, had enough faith to go back and get on my knees. I had enough of faith to pick my Bible up when I didn't see nothing. Hallelujah! I didn't see nothing. What do you see? The prophet said, what do you see? He said, I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Oh, glory. After Elijah called fire down from heaven, 850 false prophets all by his Thank you, Lord. He gave them the first shot. They got out there and prophesied and leaped and jumped and cut yourself. Elijah told them down there, said, let the God that be God. Don't bring no fire. Come up to the mountain. Nobody bring no matches. Let God, the God that be God, let him light the fire. Thank you, Jesus. Let the true God light the fire. Don't nobody bring no fire. Don't try to fix this thing. I know you got too many preachers trying to fix it in their own way. We just need to get on our knees and let God send the fire. Let God send the Holy Ghost fire. Let the fire come from heaven. We have to wait sometime. We have to wait on our knees sometime. But don't give up. Come on, come on, come on. 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 
50 false prophets showed up, but I'll tell you what, Elijah showed up too. Yes, sir. Yes, Hallelujah. Or he didn't have nobody but himself. Right, he come wagging up by himself. Just as confident. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Just as confident as a, a red bird flying through the air with his wings. He said, I'm going to give you all the first shot. And they begin to prophesy. Baal, oh Baal, oh Baal. But Baal couldn't answer. Because he wasn't no, he was dead. He was false. About the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah said, all right, get out of the way. And he tore down the altars of Baal. And he rebuilt the altars of the Lord. I know it's time that some of us rebuild our altars. Go back and re restore and build that altar back up. And say, God, I'm building my altar back because I'm going to begin to come here again. Lord, I let my altar grow up with weeds. Oh, there in the book of Hosea, I believe it is, weeds and grew up on the altars. Where they used to sacrifice, where they used to pray, where they used to worship God, weeds and grass had grown up. But it's time to restore and rebuild the altars. Put out the weeds. Put out the grass. And say, God, I'm going back. I'm going back to my dedication. I'm going back to my prayer life. I want my house back. I want my house back. They kept prophesying to no avail. Nothing happened. You pull them out, tore the altars down, rebuilt the altars of the Lord. He cut up the bullock, put it on there. Yeah. Put 12 stones representing 12 tribes of Israel that God was going to deliver that day. And he said, give me four barrels of water. Yes. I want to make this good. Yeah. I want to go an extra mile to show folks yes, sir. Come on. that there's a God on. that's going to answer my fire on a wet altar and a wet altar yeah. his fire can still burn wet wood he can still burn a wet sacrifice he can still lick up the dust in the water he can still burn the sacrifice hallelujah hey. four bears that ain't enough give me four more, more. that still ain't enough Give me four more. Twelve barrels of water. He got out there and said, God, show these people their God. That you have sent me. I've done all this. This ain't been me, God. This has been you. Show these people that what I'm doing is you. Fire. Street from heaven hit that sacrifice yes, burn up the sacrifice licked up the dust in the water hallelujah and all the people saw it and they fell on their faces and said the Lord he is God oh let me tell you God is but to show this world he is still God there's a variation people getting away from God people a lot of folks don't even know what is right. Don't even know who God is anymore. But God is fixed to show himself. He's fixed to show his realness. He's fixed to show his power. He's fixed to restore his glory. He said, I'll restore the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm has eaten. So come to pass, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Upon my handmaids and my servants, I'll pour out of my spirit. Just before the sun turns dark and the moon drips blood, it shall come to pass afterwards. He said, after all that, after you pray, after you seek God, after you come and lie all night between the porch and the altar and say, spare thy people. Spare thy people, O oh God. Bring out your heritage to reproach that the heathens might rule over us. And then they'll say, Where is your God? 
How many of them do all this mess and then they'll turn around and say, where's your God? Why well, he ain't helped you? That's what you said in the Bible. That's right. Said, 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 tell them to come out and bring me a present. Said, look over yonder. Look over yonder. Their God didn't save them. Your God ain't going to save you. Don't listen to Hezekiah. Don't listen to Hezekiah. He's telling you God's going to save you. But said, you better not listen to Hezekiah. Your God ain't going to save you from me. Sent him a letter. Hezekiah went and spread it out in the house of God. God told him, said, I'm going to send a blast. I'm going to send a blast on him. And you know what they said? said, come over and bring a present. And said, we'll give you, we'll give you a land, some land like your land. See, the devil wants your land. See, he wants the land that God blessed Israel with. That's what it was about. The land that God had given to Israel and the devil always still right now over yonder. They want that little plot of land. All in thousands and millions of acres the Muslims has got over there. They, they, Israel's got one little dot. And they want it. And they want to kill them off the face of the earth. You know what it was? It's, it's handed down. Ishmaelite. Ishmaelite. That's right. God told Abraham, take your son, your only son. He didn't even recognize Ishmael. Because Ishmael was of the bond woman. Ishmael was a type of the flesh. Isaac, the spirit of the free woman. God told Abraham, take your son, your only son. Take him up and sacrifice. And you know how Abraham went through. But there, Elijah. God set the fire, burn up the sacrifice. And there, yeah. he told him, he said, go tell you, Master Abraham, and also the 850 false prophets after the fire fell, they took off running. And Elijah said, head them off, don't let them get away. He took a sword and slew all 850 of them false prophets. Come on. He knows God's word is going to slay the wicked. God's word is going to slay these false prophets. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Most of all preachers is turn to prophets. They all saying the same thing. It's your season. God's going to bless you. Well, I believe God bless you. Yeah. But you know, some folks need to pray and still be blessed. Some folks need to repent. You don't go out and bless everybody over sin. That's right. Some people need to repent. And if you ain't got enough discernment to know whether somebody time for them to be blessed or time for them to repent, he don't need to be out there trying to prophesy. Because it's flesh, it ain't God. But everybody getting the same. Your season. I'll tell you what season it is. It's season to pray. It's season to get in the house of God and call on the name of Jesus. It's time to pray and repent and turn to God. This nation's fallen. The Antichrist has taken over this nation. Our government is sold out. To the Antichrist. They're pulling in and bringing in this old transgender pushing homosexual marriage. Pushing everything, just like I was telling you about that old Barbie doll. It is descended from, from a prostitute. And in the movie, this preacher said she's, she's teaching that women can do without men. That's that old perverted spirit. God didn't make it like that. He made male and female. He said, for this call shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, not his man. A woman to a woman, his wife. There shall be no more twain but one flesh. That's God's way. And anything outside is a curse. Anything outside of it, God's going to judge it. Like he did Solomon goodbye. He said eternal punishment. It'll be eternal punishment. Forever and ever. I said forever now. Yeah. 
There was this woman that looked like this one that wrote that book about heaven and hell. Said she went to heaven and went to hell. She wrote these books. I forget her name. She said it looked like the preachers had the preachers wouldn't preach the word. Had a worse place. They had little individual kids. Had their own personal pit. Forever. They try to climb out. They said, God, I'll preach. No matter what, if you just let me go back, I'll preach. But you know what? I'm going to preach while I'm here. God will give me strength. Will give me a tongue. Will give me a mind. Will give me strength. Keep the fight in me. No, everybody ain't going to love you. You're not going to be popular. I'm not popular. They love me, but they don't love what I preach. Right. Come on. A lot of folks love me. They see me, they hug me, they tell me how much they love me. But they won't like this preacher. <laughs> this is me. Go ahead. Go ahead and preach. The word of God. We've got to tell the truth, folks. This nation is crumbling. And what always helped up this nation was the men of God in the pulpit that would thunder. The word of God that wouldn't back down, that fasted and prayed, and God anointed them. A non fasting and praying preacher is not a preacher. He's a deadhead. You gotta have something for God to anoint. You gotta present something to God that God can anoint. Come on. He said, I beseech you therefore, brother, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Yes. Separate from the world. Amen. Come on. He said, come out of her, my people. Hey. Come out of her. Yes. Separate yourself Amen. from the world. Come on. Come on. I beseech you therefore, brother, he said, by the mercies of God. We got to do it by God's mercy. That's to present your body. A living sacrifice. Come on. Holy and acceptable under God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. Be not conformed to this world. What's happening to the church? They're being conformed to the world now. When God said, come out of it. When God said separate yourself from worldliness and sin and give your time to me, it's time for the church to fill the altars. It's time for the church to come back to the house of God and pray. Folks, it's time to pray. This nation's crumbling. It's falling through. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble himself and pray. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. That's what folks don't want to do. They don't want to call nothing wicked. So they say, what am I doing wrong? Come on. If you sit on the word long enough and somebody preaches the truth, it won't take you long to find out where you're erring at. The word of God will pull the sheet off of you. The Bible said it, it's like to cover. You cover your head up and your feet pop out. You can't hide from God's word. God's word will find you. God's word will dig you out. You cover your head up, your feet's going to pop out. You cover your feet, your head's going to pop out. You can't hide from God. Just come clean and come to the altar and get on your knees and say, God, I'm not where I used to be. I don't pray like I used to pray. I don't live like I used to live. I don't fast like I used to fast. He said, return to me. Return to me, he said. And what? I will return to you. God said, if you come back to me, I'll come back to you. Man, that, that's, that's pretty simple, ain't it? But see, the world's got such a hold on folks. The world's got such a hold on people. And they're around people every day that don't live nothing. 
So it makes them feel each day they're getting a little more comfortable and not living right. Because they're around folks that don't. God looks for you to be a light. He looks for us to stand up if nobody else stands up. He said, you're a light of the world. You're like a city set on a hill that can't be here. We wait for somebody else to do it. Ain't nobody else going to do it for you. God's looking for you. So Elijah slew those 850 false prophets. He turned and told the servants to go to LA. He said, go yonder. He put his head between his knees. Hadn't rained in three and a half years. He put his head between his knees and told the service, said, go tell me what you see. He come back and said, man of God, I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. You know, sometimes it's like, especially this hour, you don't see nothing. When that of God is still on the throne, if none of us see nothing, God is still in charge. He's still on the throne and he hadn't lost his power. We've got to believe that. Yes. We've got to have confidence. Yes. He said, go back seven times. I'm saying, I'm going back each time. Don't see nothing. Don't, but keep going. If you don't see nothing, keep going. Keep going. Go again. Go again. And that's that eighth time, which has been eighth time, that seventh time from that last time he told him to go. He looked and he said, I see a little child about the size of a man. Hey, Lord. <laughs> That's all Elijah needed. He said, all right, go tell Ahab, he better get his, hitch his horse up and get down from here. Praise God, it's fixed the rain. This rain going to flood him out. Hallelujah. Before he could move good, the elements done turned black. Praise God. Here come Ahab with his horse and chariot. Ride on down through it. Oh, Elijah reached down, grabbed up that mantle, and ran before the horse and chariot. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I know that God is always on top. God will put you on top. And the church is going to come out on top. It will stay with him. It will stay on our knees. It will stay in that word and be true to God. He hadn't changed, folks. He said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. He didn't say something I pat you on the back for. He said, it's your reasonable service. I saved you to live right. Amen. God delivered us. He went to the cross and redeemed us by His blood. Come on. Yes. For us to be like Him. Yes. That's His goal. Yes, sir. That's His plan. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Lift your hands up and just praise. Amen. Tell Him you love Him. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies. A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice is a living dead man. You're dead to sin. You're dead to the world. You don't give it up. Yeah. A living sacrifice. See, under the old covenant, when they killed the sacrifice, the sheep, the goats, and the sheep, they killed them. But here it is. Paul is telling us, "You be a sacrifice too. You lay yourself on the altar, but you be a living sacrifice." You die out to the world, but you live for God. A living sacrifice. You live in, but you give up everything around you. You know, folks, you ain't going to make everybody happy. You ain't going to make your family happy. You ain't going to make your next door neighbors happy when you set out to the Lord. Folks will begin to turn on you. Jesus, what Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm not alone. I'm alone, but yet I'm not alone. He said, the Father's with me. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
He said, I'm alone for this world concerned, but yet I'm not alone. For the Father's with me. That's right, that's right. Holy and acceptable. Holy and acceptable to who God. Present your body, present something to God. You know when they went out and killed them lambs, they couldn't grab a three-legged lamb, a one-eyed lamb. God wouldn't accept it. That lamb had to be perfect. Why? It represented the lamb of God. It represented Jesus. It was a type and a shadow of Jesus. That when he offered himself on the cross, he would be without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. He never knew no sin. No God was ever found in his mouth. Holy and acceptable. See, they, they would take that lamb in the house. I believe it was five days. They would take that lamb and turn him every way but a loose, looking for a flaw. Because the lamb had to be perfect. For God to accept it. Because Jesus was perfect. And for their sins to be covered. You know. The, the, the blood of bulls and goats never did take away sin. It just covered sin. But when Jesus comes. said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away. See Jesus come and took it away. The blood and bulls and goats just covered it. To, that, that God couldn't see it. And he wouldn't judge the people. But when Jesus came, he took the sins away for the whole world. He redeemed us from the curse that nobody else could. He offered up blood that nobody else could offer. He offered up himself that nobody else could offer up themselves. Not Moses, not Peter, not Paul, not Elijah. All these men were great men, but none of them was like Jesus. He never knew no sin. No God was ever in his mouth. Acceptable. Under God, which is your reasonable service. Listen, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. That's where the church is going today. The everything the world is doing, the church is doing it. When I can remember the church of old, they didn't do that. They were separate, but they, you know what? They had power too. They had power in the church. When folks need deliverance, they would come. And there was power there to deliver. When you conform to the world, you lose the power. And the glory disappears. You sit in deadness and coldness. There ain't nothing no worse than a cold, dead church. Man, I'd rather be out in the woods. Yes. Looking for bullets. <laughs> Climbing a tree, stop a line vine. Then they're sitting in a cold, dead church where folks won't pray, won't live right. You catch them out back to the world at ball games or the concerts or anywhere the worlds are going, they're out there. <laughs> to have power with God, we have to separate ourselves. And folks worship Alabama and Arbor. But you can't get them rascals to pray. The world's going to hell, folks. Your children are going to hell. Your grandchildren are going to hell. My God. We sat three and four hours screaming and hollering, knock over furniture. Watching somebody pick a piece of pig skin and run across the line. God help us. God showed me he's going to start judging these hundred thousand. You watch it. Just like he judged how are you burn. God told us he's going to burn up in vacation places. California right now is getting it. Never had a storm like this in California. Never in all history. Hawaii ain't never been burned up like this. They call it the paradise of the world, but God is burning it up. People go to New Orleans to sin. They go to Atlanta.
Atlanta to see him, but I saw Atlanta bust wide open with an earthquake. I saw a tsunami hit Mobile. I was running. In the vision, I was, water was flushing my feet. I was at Mount Vernon at the red light. And I said, Lord, how far am I going to have to run to Jackson, uh, Grove Hill? He said, but Jackson, he said, no, at least Thomasville. And I looked back and everything was covered with water. The whole Mobile area was nothing showing. I mean, it was all it have to be is an earthquake out there in that gulf. Water come in a mile, two or three miles high. Five and six and seven, eight hundred mile an hour. You can't run from that. Amen. That's God's judgment. See, when God tells you it's coming, the way you do it, you pray and let God turn it. God sent a word to Nineveh and said, Nineveh, I will destroy you in 40 days. But they got on their knees and prayed, and God spared Nineveh. But you can't only get folks to pray no more. You can tell them how bad it is, but it's like they don't see it no more. Like Noah's generation. The flood was coming, but nobody believed Noah. He was building that big old 400 and 35 foot ship up there on that hill preaching it was going to rain but nobody believed it. folks no matter what you're doing enjoying out here something like a tsunami comes it's over with if God don't deliver you and all that stuff you sold yourself out to is going to swallow it's going to be swallowed up with you you think about all the things they were doing in the days of Noah, and the Bible said that every imagination of their mind had become continually evil. When that oh, when that flood swallowed them up, it swallowed them up with their good times. It swallowed them up with what they were doing. He said they didn't found over a hundred, over thirteen, fourteen hundreds missing. They'll probably keep it quiet. Come on. They don't want to alarm folks. Are you listening? Amen. See? He said, cry loud, fair enough. Let me tell you, to be in this old world, Jesus said, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil. See, God wants us to stay here and be lights, but he wants us to be kept from the world. You know, the Bible said God's a jealous God. Right. Yes. Be not conformed with this, to this world. Be transformed by the renewing your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many wants to prove what's that good and acceptable? Amen. That God is pleased with you. How many wants God to be pleased with you? When that day comes, or if he sends a tsunami, he wakes you up and says, get up. Get out of here. Get up. You know what the Bible said? God knows how to deliver the righteous. And reserved ungodly for the day of judgment. I say to the grace of God, given to me, to every man, is among you to think not of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to his God, and dealt to every man the measure of faith. Let's stand on our feet, lift our hands to the Lord, tell him, Lord, stir me today, stir my heart, stir me, Jesus, I want, I want you to be satisfied. I want you to be satisfied with me. You know, folks, I know the Word of God most of the time catches us seemingly in a bad place. But the 
Bible said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free Amen Don't you love it? Let's lift your hand. Lift your hands. I want my Lord to be satisfied. I want my life to be what He'd have me to. And I come to the end of my way. I hear Him say. Son, I'm satisfied with you. Everybody sing it with me. Oh, my love, to be satisfied with me. Oh, my love, to be what he'd have it be. When I come to the end of my way. altars and pray today. Praise God. Will you do that? Let's bow somewhere on our knees today and let's ask the Lord to help us. Will you come to the altar back where you are? Let's get on your knees. Ask the Lord. Praise God for his help today. Will you do that? Oh, come on, let's pray. Oh, we ever had an altar field again. We need him field. We need help in this generation. Oh, we need help in this generation. Come on and lift up your voice and cry out. Tell him, Lord, I need you. Oh, if we ever need you, Lord, we need you now. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Lord, we humble ourselves before you today. Now I ask you, Lord, for help. Lord, America's crumbling. Lord, the church is like Saul's army. She's hiding behind the curtain. Oh, Lord. But when David stood up and slew that devil, slew that giant, they broke out. They began to come out. Revival broke out. Lord, you turn things around. God, we pray to that you turn things around. God, our nation, our country. Oh, Jesus, we have evil leaders in the White House, in the Congress, in the Senate, in the Governor's House, in the City Houses, in the County Houses.
Oh, Lord, don't say that none of them were saying anything about Jesus. Lord, you're the answer. You're the answer, Lord. You said, call upon me and I'll answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things. Lord, we pray that you'll turn us around, Lord, turn this nation around. You'll save our children and our grandchildren, Lord. Oh, our children are going to hell, Lord, our grandchildren, our families. God, we call upon your name today. We ask for your mercy. We ask you to look on us, Lord. Send the rain. Things are dry, Lord, in the natural and the spiritual. Send the Holy Ghost rain. Lord, send an outpouring of your spirit. God, break the powers of hell. Drive back the demon forces of evil. God, this old antichrist spirit that's moving into pulpits. The schools, the churches. God, the governments. We ask you, Lord, to stand up one more time. Lord, you told me, keep preaching the truth and the word of God will prevail. Lord, you told me America's worth saving. Save us, Lord. God, save us, Lord. We fell lower than we've ever been. Lord, the world's laughing at America. They're laughing at our leadership. We've been the most blessed nation of the world. God, they're laughing at us now like they did Israel. God told them that the enemy is going to laugh at you. You're going to be a byword. Oh, our president's become a byword. Lord, we ask you to move. God, wake up your pulpits. Wake up your preachers. Stir the men of God everywhere, Lord. We begin to cry out. Not to throw the hands up or throw the towel in. But to stand up, Lord. And never pulpit across America again. God's a word to prevail. Oh, Jesus. You said before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, you would send Elijah, the prophet. Turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Hearts of the children to the fathers. Lest you smack the earth with a curse. Lord, touch your people today. Wake us up. Stir, stir, stir your ministry, stir your handmaidens. God, help us to gather back in to the house of God and begin to pray. Oh, Jesus, wake up your people, Lord. Wake up your people, Lord. Judgment's in the land. Lord, judgment's in the land. The old storms is out there making up right now. God, have mercy. Oh, Lord, I know you're going to get people's attention. God, have mercy on your people, Lord. You said you knew how to deliver the righteous. Reserved ungodly for the day of judgment. God, have mercy on my children, my grandchildren, my family, my church family, my community, my brothers and sisters, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Spare in the day of judgment. We ask you to spare. Lord, bring them out the streets and the highways. Send revival. Give us revival, Lord. Send us an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. God, turn this nation upside down again. Send the rain, Lord. God, we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All us lift our hands to the Lord. Tell him we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Don't you love him? 